Hi guys, welcome in. Hey Randy, 
Hi, Nike, DMG, welcome back, and Tom. How is everyone's day today? You're ready for salmon, yes. Lucky you, it's right here. Nike, you're feeling good since you started keto? That's awesome, man. I mean, that's, that's kind of how it should go when you start like dieting is you should feel better right away. That's how you know you're doing something good for your body. I caught it, yeah, yeah, thanks for asking. This, obviously the date is on it, so I vacuum sealed it when I caught it and that was on August 3rd. So in the summertime and slowly working through all the salmon I got, I have one more big side of spring salmon or Chinook salmon it's called and then just a couple small pieces of Gravlax left. So kind of once this stuff is done, then I can go fishing for more salmon because there's always salmon in season in BC. Hey Distill, how are you? Smoke it and have it for the New Year's. So good. We do have some smoked salmon as well still. Okay, so Sammy posted in the Discord before we started that we got something a little new for stream. I am good, thank you for asking. So it's set up and if you couldn't tell, different angle of the, the cutting board. Guess what, Vune! Hi Vune! <laughs> Tom, it doesn't work, oh no! Vume, 20 months, 20 months. Pretty soon we're gonna be at two years and then what? Then things are getting a little serious, just a little bit. Okay, we had a good day today, finished work a little bit early, which was awesome, we didn't get stuck in traffic. So, check it out guys. This is the new view. We are top down. So let's see what we think on today's stream. If we are happy with this view. I said it kind of looked like Cousin It. Or not, not Cousin It hands. What is the hand on Adam's family? Whatever the hand is on Adam's family, that's what it reminded me of. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Is that the wine rack? Yeah, yeah, there's a couple new things in here. We're doing like a little bit of a behind the scenes renovation. Just, just a little one. Couple of upgrades, see how we like the layout of things. But yeah, it's nice to have this different view. I think this is your first time back since we switched stuff up, Vune. So a little bit more of this side of the kitchen. All right, so on the menu tonight, we have some beautiful pink salmon fillets and we're cooking enough so that we can have leftovers for lunch tomorrow at work. Thanks, Vune. Yeah, very proud of Sammy. He didn't break any of the wine glasses in, what, the whole three months that we had them? Hi, Cookie, how are you? And yes, I did catch this. So pink salmon, very small compared to most other varieties of salmon. They're more similar to trout in my opinion. So we'll cook up basically a whole fish. So we have two sides there to cook and you can tell just by the size of it that it's so much smaller. You keep breaking shit all the time. Oh, that's why you guys are friends. Okay, and then to go along with that, Pulled out beautiful kabocha squash. We don't have a ton of beets to roast, but we have a couple from the garden. And then I have this leftover butternut squash from last week to use up. So kind of like a pasta thing going on today because we have these really interesting pumpkin noodles that we picked up at an Asian market here. So this is what they look like. Kind of similar to 
what linguini I would say. So I've never used these before, but I loved the color of them first off. And I'm gonna just go with the good old like boil quickly in salted water and then just toss it with some sauce afterwards. You thought this was cheese because it was so orange. <laughs> oh, Graham's birthday is tomorrow. That's right, he's turning 37. I saw his tweet. I was like, holy smokes. Gramazon Prime. Okay, so that's that. So kind of like a pasta thing going on. I don't know the texture of those noodles yet, but I'm hoping it's like kind of like pasta-y. And then just a nice dill cream sauce to go with it. It was on the tweet, Nike. Pretty sure Amanda made the graphics and it said Gramazon Prime on it. <laughs> So I was just referencing what I already saw. I'm innocent. Maybe not really, but hey, we can claim to be. <laughs> okay, so let's write out our prep list. New notebook today as well. Starting a new one. And we'll carry right along. Other thing that we do have going on in today's stream that I might wanna do first is these amazing pine mushrooms. So they're pretty dirty, but I told Zach that we would process them. So we should probably get that done. If he does his end of the bargain and gets the mushrooms for us, well then we better hold up our end and make sure to make them delicious and not waste the wonderful food. All right, so let's start with the salmon. We're gonna pan fry that. So we'll start with a little bit of vegetable oil. Obviously the salmon will be seasoned. And I wanted to actually use some of this thyme salt. So trying to finish up this little jar of infused salt. I don't know if it's just thyme, but it might be like also French herbs. I don't even remember where I got this, but it's a little bit fancy. Okay, so salmon, I'll just put beside it thyme salt. And then I think when we, when we flip the salmon over, we can baste it a little bit. And then with those fillets, because they're so small and thin, is they're not gonna take very long to cook. So that will be the last thing I think that we do. Jay Frick, thank you for the eight months, man. Thank you, thank you. Hojerific, you're in town for my wedding? Yeah, it's this weekend and not June 20th, 2020. You're going to Edmonton this weekend? What? Cheers, dude. Okay, so that's the salmon. So we're gonna roast the beets and the squash so we don't have everything jumbling up on the stove top. We don't like to do like five things at one time. So beets, squash. Because we're serving this in a pasta is we're gonna cut those vegetables pretty small. So I don't think it'll take very long to roast and we'll actually cut the beets before we cook it as well. So let's say it will take around 15 minutes to roast those up. So not very long either. You got there today. It's your Christmas because you actually work Christmas week. What? Wait, do you have family there? Why are you in Edmonton? And also I heard it's like minus seven there right now. What is going on? That's so cold. Okay, other vegetables that I want to put into the pasta just for a little bit of greenery is a couple handfuls of spinach. We'll just let that wilt in. We might even just add it to our dill cream sauce. It shouldn't give off too much color in the sauce. Like it's not gonna make the sauce green if we add a couple handfuls of spinach to it at the end. Hi Josie, good to see you. Hanging for a while before Betty's. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the I'm not the only one who says Betty's. It's like time for Betty. <laughs> Hello, Annie. 
Yes, the bar, which maybe we will start to visit once again on Thursdays because we're always thirsty on Thursdays. Oh, your mom is there. Nice. It's a refreshing cold. You always enjoy winter. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I think I'm good up to like minus 10 and then I don't wanna go further than that. How was your day, Annie? Okay, so spinach and then for the noodles, just have to boil them quickly. I'm gonna guesstimate that we'll just boil them until they float. Oh no, Annie. You went to bed at 8 p.m. and then you overslept still? Well, you must have needed a bunch of rest. Yeah, but you weren't late for school. How does that work when a teacher is late for school? Actually, I think I've had that happen like once or twice. And then it's like, why is the principal teaching class? <laughs> oh, that is the worst feeling. Yeah, waking up and you're like, where am I? What time is it? Oh gosh. Okay, down the line, dill cream sauce. And that should be it. Usually you get up at 5.30. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit different. Pink salmon pan fried with thyme, salt, pumpkin noodles, roasted beets and squash, spinach, dill cream sauce. Yum. Yeah, deep, deep sleep. Okay, that's that. And then at the bottom, I'll just put pine mushrooms. And actually it's, it's still nice and early that I think we should do those first. I think we should do those first as the other stuff doesn't take that long to cook. Maybe if we were roasting the beets whole, then they would take about 45 minutes to an hour. But since we're gonna cut them up already, not going to take very long. So this should be a pretty nice and quick, like weeknight dinner. You overslept last week. Unfortunately, you're the only one with a key to the building. That is the worst. <laughs> that is the worst. You're like, sorry, everyone for holding up your day. Hydration. All right, so first things first, pine mushies. Look at this different view. It's gonna take me a bit to get used to. The only thing we lose is like a top two inches. That's not bad, not bad. So what we ordered for this to work, obviously you're like, how is this top down and we're not seeing the camera in front of Kate? So it's the new, Elgato multi-mount, I think it's called. And Sam, Sam saw it at TwitchCon, I think, and he's like, we need to try this. So we're trying it out for this, and then if we really like it, then I might switch up the stove angle of the camera as well, so we can kind of just like move it around for what we're cooking that day and just have a nice closer view to like the couple burners that we're using, because we don't always use all four burners on the stove at one time. Thanks, Josie. Pumpkin noodles. So I got these from the Asian market here. This is what they look like. And I said to Sammy, I was like, oh, those look interesting. So I just vacuum sealed them and then froze them until I felt like it was time to use them. So that time is now. Do I switch the view with Stream Deck? I do. And this one, so I just have the mini one, possibly getting a, a bigger one because in the future, I would like to do more, more interactive stuff on here with you guys. Yeah, intriguing, right? And there was a couple other flavors as well. Should have kept the plastic packaging so maybe you guys could look for it in the store. Yeah, that makes sense, Strike None. It's like all the other bakery employees expect you to be at work. So they go by your schedule. That's the worst. Hey, Essa, good to see you. 
Okay, so obviously these are pretty dirty. That's one thing I gotta... Guys, what if I buy the pastry brush for Zach to brush the mushrooms off before he brings them to me? Maybe that'll be a good hint. Cause that is the longest part I find of foraging is like making sure it's nice and clean and edible. And maybe we'll put some mushrooms in this. I don't know how that would go. I mean, most of the stuff that we're cooking is pretty earthy. And what did we do last time? We did some chanterelles with the halibut. Maybe pine mushrooms would go well with salmon. These, yeah, this is not actually the best way to keep these, Annie. So thanks for calling that out, but this is how he gave them to me. Usually I like to put them on a sheet pan covered with a towel underneath and on top, but that's for like long-term keeping. If you do that, they'll stay for like up to two weeks in the fridge. But this, I knew I was processing in like a day or two, so I just left it in there. These are the same ones, Hojerific. Yeah, these are the same ones. So I'm just gonna fill this up with some cool water so we can start dunking those in and cleaning them up. These are actually really easy to clean is, they don't have really deep gills and the flesh on them is really smooth, so you can kind of just wipe all the dirt and pine needles off. Obviously pine mushrooms will have some pine needles on them. It just makes sense. And I don't know where he found these, to be honest. I think he was out hunting for deer and he just stumbled upon these. But I've also not taken a trip out to Zach's property in probably like a month or so. So we don't know if anything new is growing there yet. I know he's a busy guy. That should be good. I think we'll just do one at a time. We don't want to waterlog them too much. Hunting for beer? <laughs> Always. Short term, yeah, Ziploc if you want, but I still would always keep like a towel in the bag with it to wick away any moisture. Cause once something gets moist, that's when it starts to break down quickly. Yeah, there you go, Annie. There you go. But the other thing I was gonna say, if you put it in a Ziploc bag, also don't seal it completely so it can kind of breathe. Cause they're still alive. pan, towel. Boom, I'm just gonna pop this salmon and noodles back into the fridge for now while we're not using it yet. Before you had cancer, you hated mushrooms, and after you had your stem cell transplant, you guess your taste buds change, and now you love them. Cool. A lot of food that you used to hate, you now like. That's very interesting. I wonder. This beauty.
And then the one really easy determining factor of whether it is a pine mushroom or not is it smells like pine. So that's what I kept telling Zach is he brought a couple of mushrooms over that looked a little bit similar to this, but I knew it wasn't because when I smelled it, it didn't really smell like anything. I was like, it needs to have like a very piney aroma. And then see how I'm just kind of scraping the dirty, the dirty bits off with my fingers. So the flesh is so, so firm that you can really just scrape it off and it won't fall apart. That is kind of my, this is for sure one of my favorite mushrooms, I think. They're so good with beef. It's insane. Like these mushrooms grilled, another one of those things that is like very similar to meat. Very meaty. And then this bottom part. So this is a really fun mushroom to process in my opinion, because we do just kind of peel that off. And then you get like beautiful fresh stem underneath. Oh, bear must be in the cul-de-sac. Someone just let off a bear banger. Did you guys hear that? It's back. <laughs> Those aren't cap guns. <laughs> That's definitely for wildlife. So a bear banger is like a flare, kind of. It's like a little flare pen, but it doesn't let off like any explosion other than a bang. So it's like just a little thing, a gunpowder, where it, it is the size of a pen and you just load a little cartridge in and then the bottom part you can pull out and then it whacks the gunpowder and just makes a bang and will like kind of shoot it shoot that thing at the bear as to like scare it away really quickly. And the bear will be like, oh God, I'm out of here. <laughs> at least we hope that. Yeah, cleaning them up, cooking girl, welcome back. Nope, not when they are having a really good time, Scaramouche. Okay, that is that. And then the rest of this, we'll just trim off. So like, look at this beauty. So white, it's crazy. Bear sausage, let's do it. Just gonna get this out, clean up the water a bit. And obviously it's way quicker to clean a bunch of big mushrooms. So like last year when I was at the restaurant, I think most of the mushrooms that we got in that were pine were maybe a third of the size of this. So it took so much longer to clean them. A lot of wasted labor in my opinion. You guys did better this year for morel season than the last three years. Did you have some fires nearby maybe? So here's a smaller one and we can obviously tell there's a little bit of a difference that as it gets older, the gills kind of opened up. So where it was peeling away from the stem hasn't happened yet on that little guy, which is good because maybe we get more yield from it, right? Oh yeah, bear bangers. Bear bangers and mash. <laughs> Canadian cuisine. Interesting cooking grill. I have never found morels. I've only found shanties and lobsters this year. And this was like my first year kind of getting into foraging. Hey, 
Hey, Fatty McSamich. Yeah, what if a bear comes in? He's like smelling what I'm cooking. Maybe it is my fault. I have the window open. Just like look over and like see a little snout poking through. <laughs> Yeah, Scaramouche. I've read that as well, is like worms. Worms and ants are gonna be the future. But I also read the same thing about like mushrooms. So I don't know what to think about it. I am not a huge lover of eating bugs. I just think the texture is so weird. I mean, I'm not a person who's like into chicken cartilage and like crunching down on that stuff. Whereas like Sam can, he doesn't mind it. So like the weird textures for me will throw me off of it. I think I would rather just like stick to eating vegetables if there was nothing else. Unless we found like a really good way to cook insects. These are called pine mushrooms or matsutake. Thanks, cooking girl. People pick the roadsides? What? I thought you're not supposed to do that because the mushrooms are then growing in exhaust and it can't really taste good anymore. Hey, Torino, nice redeem. Would I ever go vegan? I don't think so. I have like thought about it for sure. And I am comfortable with how I source my proteins that I don't feel like I need to go to that extreme. Also, I just don't think it's healthy for the body. And I think I'll just end it there before we get like a huge vegan debate going. Unless you guys are comfortable with it, then I'm comfortable with it. Like everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And I so, so respect all of the people that are vegan. Like, thank you very much for doing that. But I think if everyone like ate meat that was sourced sustainably, there would be a bigger impact than just the few vegans that are doing their part. Drink, oh no. It's not meant for alcohol. This is not a way to get me drunk, guys, but it is a way to keep me hydrated. I like water. Hey, Buff. Yeah, but then you can't have duck boobs. Exactly. Hydrate. Maybe I will do a shots one and I'll make it like way more expensive. And you guys, oh my gosh. Okay, let's refill this. Also, you know this is just gonna make me have more bathroom breaks. <laughs> yeah, just dunk the glass in the mushroom water. It's probably pretty pretty good for you. All sorts of wild things in there. Ten bucks. Save your money for something better. <laughs> Nice, you're on land, buff. How are your sea legs treating you? Also, where are you at? There must have been a little something 
nibbling at this part. It's a little bit torn up and a touch soggy, I could say. We'll just wipe that off though. That's all you gotta do. Definitely an older one, right? If we look to how the cap of this one is like starting to curl up and this one is still curled in. So we, it's interesting to see the maturation of the mushrooms. It's pretty much just dirt. That's pretty much all it is. Dirt and pine needles. Ouch. You guys know when you like peel away the skin from under your fingernail? I did that at work today. The worst. Yeah, a little Worcestershire sauce and you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, these are not cultivated. Yeah, how they age. Exactly, Armored. Maturation. That was a big word for me, too. Maturation. A pretty cool veggie brush. Oh, see, I was just talking, cooking girl about getting Zach one so that when he picks it, he can at least wipe off like a little bit of the needles. But I need one for myself too. I need a little scrubber. Yeah, daily goal achieved. We learned a new word today. Maturation. The shrooms, I don't know what they're for yet, Nike. I might mix them into our fried rice tomorrow with some pork belly. Four bucks, that's cheap for the brush. A potato scrubber, yeah, exactly, Buff. That's all we really need here. It is quite satisfying to peel the stem parts. It's like my favorite part. It just peels this like perfect thin layer off. Look at this one. Obviously it's like busted open as it was growing. It outgrew itself. Get a new snow brush. Winter is coming. Uh, we don't even have one. So I guess that says something about how much it snows here. Oh, I just picked off a nice piece there. I'm gonna save that. These, I actually don't know where they were picked, cooking grill. They might have been from Zach's land, but I know he's been going out hunting around this area recently, so it might have been elsewhere. Sometimes he picks on his friend's properties as well. Oh, chop them up, cook them in double cream and sweet soy. Yum. Cream and soy? I've never heard of that buff. I'm like thinking about this combination right now. Cream and sweet soy. I'm intrigued. It's supposed to snow. Yeah, Sam's parents just got their first dump, I think today. They're out in Ontario, so closer to you.
It's real good, buff. Okay, that's that. I find that not a lot of worms go go into these mushrooms as much into the pines. Usually not very wormy. I think I might have to rinse that one. Maybe it's because the flesh is so firm. Chestnut mushrooms. I don't even know what that is. You can pick your friends and your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. Wait, who said that? Why can't you pick your friend's nose? Okay, we have two, two more. Let's go with this funny looking one. Look at that one, pretty funny. You can tell it's getting a bit old. Sift through some of these bitters. Yeah, looks like a fun guy. Oh yeah, definitely has had some fun. Go, go, go. Okay, so after this, we're going to start chopping up the squash and the beets and getting those ready to roast. And then we can get together some stuff for our dill cream sauce as well for the noodles. We can get a pot of water going as well. I don't know how soft or firm those noodles are. So bear with me guys. Would these be suitable for soup? Yeah, totally. Totally could make a mushroom soup out of it. But I wouldn't just strictly use these mushrooms for it. Could be overpowering is, we've got a more like piney flavor to them. So it might not be the flavor you're looking for in your mushroom soup, but adding a couple of them will add a really nice kind of earthy kick. Hey Dust, how are you? It's so hot there. Where are you? Did you tell me where you're at, Buff? Oh, you're in Samoa. You're in Samoa? Annie, thank you for gifting the sub to Tom. Tom, eight months already, man. There's that crazy one. These are called pine mushrooms or matsutake. So look at these ones. The gills are 
starting to age just a touch. And that is the last one, guys. Yeah, really, really nice. These are some of the biggest I've seen. So like what I would do last year when I would cook these, when they were in season, is I would cut the cap off and then grill it and then like slice the stem into smaller pieces and grill that and then chop it up and we would put it into a risotto or serve the chunks with steak. So freaking good. These are from Zach. He found them when he was out hunting and just kind of dropped them outside for us. He just lets us know. He's always putzing around here while we're at work. So he's like, there's a present for you when you get home. We're like, yes. So this is the deal that we have with him is if he finds the mushrooms, then we go half and half on them because he doesn't know how to process them and doesn't want to take the time. So that's our trade. And that's pretty fair trade. Yeah, shroomies, pine mushrooms. I'm not sure how much these cost in this store because I've never seen them in the store. But I think there is one store downtown here that has them right now. I think they were selling them for like $15 a pound or something. Magical. So let's weigh these out when we're done and see what we have. <laughs> Ta-da! Yes, look how dirty that water is. That's beautiful. Vune, I got a drink? The water? <laughs> no. Ta-da. Okay, what are you doing on the ship? I'm just going to go dump this outside. Just tuck it over the fence. Feels good to have those done. Have I seen the latest dice picks? Mm, I saw one. Was it kind of like a white sparkly colored one on Instagram? I just have to drink water. Maple syrup. 
That could be an option. Okay, so next step is just to trim off the little bit of blemishes, if there are any other ones. There are just some things that we have to do with a knife. We just want to be gentle with the stem because we don't want to peel too much off. Nice. That looks good. This stuff in here, really not worried about that at all. We haven't even taken it to the kiln yet because they wanna charge an unlawful price for getting it dried. Is that got a piece done like that before for like a couple hundred bucks? And then we called the guy and he's like, yeah, it'll cost like a thousand dollars. And we were like, well then, I'm gonna wait on that. Yeah, that sucks. But we're hoping that Zach can like maybe sweet talk him because Zach knows the guy and maybe get a better deal. Cause yeah, it would be nice to get that built. Sammy, you having a bun? Yeah. He's having a bun. Oh yeah, for sure they're ripping ripping us off because they don't know us, right? They're like, oh, new customers, we'll just charge them whatever they want or whatever we want. It's like, no, no, no. They do take a lot of prep dust. A lot of love goes into like foraged mushrooms. Almost got me. You almost got you? Almost got me. Hi, Matt, how are you? Hello. They're so meaty and like so firm. Like this is me really pressing on it. Nothing happens. The nice ones? Really nice. Nice. You got cold? Okay. You're doing okay, it snowed. Oh yeah, my dad's seen a moose this morning. Holy, winter is coming guys. Not ready for it. I think we'll get quite a bit of snow here this year too though. I feel it. I feel it in the air. Okay, I think last one. Last one. And then we're moving along. So yeah, longest part is washing them. After that, pretty simple. How do you guys like the top down? Yeah, it's coming for Annie tomorrow. Okay, now we get to weigh them. Yeah, Sammy's jamming. Jamming. Are you straight jamming, bugs? Pa yeah, he's pajamming. No, he should use this. Just fuck it up. Wait, it's 4 p.m. on Thursday, Buff? You're literally almost a day ahead of us. <laughs> Nutella and pork shoulder. <laughs> Delicious.
Oh no, now you guys will know if I'm lying about what the scale says. <laughs> Let's go pounds. Pile them up. Ooh, what did we get, Matt? A new camera mount. So that we can have like a top-down view now of the cutting board. Okay, guesses, guys. How many pounds of mushrooms are here? Unless you already saw it, then you can't guess. Wait, let me do one more. Oh no! Now it's falling. One point eight. Yeah, two. You guys were right. Once you saw that, though, it was one pound. 15 and a half ounces. It's pretty close to two, but I think Josie, your first guess was pretty close. Yeah, if it's not five, we don't have enough. Okay, so now I can tell Zach that there was two pounds because he was wondering. And he also found some shaggy manes. <laughs> oh man. They are so dense, yeah. But still, two pounds for these? Pretty dense. All right, those are just gonna go into the fridge for now. How good is that jam bun though? Smells so good. Yum. Mm. That's a good bun. Mm -hmm. All right, time to make some dinner. Squash, beets, squash, not cheese as Vion thought. Not cheese. Why do you want to slap it out of your hand, Buff? Why would you want that? Oh, so you can eat it. That's fair. Fair enough then. I'll allow this. All right, so because we're putting all these vegetables in with noodles that are similar to linguine, but pumpkin flavored, we need to cut this nice and small, nice bite-sized pieces. You just can't beat it. <gasps> Arm wrestle, that would be fun. What is that? That's how the jack poured out? Yeah. Why isn't it clear? Guys, can whiskey go bad? Ugh. You should have had the apple <laughs> rum. I'm trying to get rid of it. Okay. Yeah, drink it and find out. <clears throat> Buff, cheers. <laughs> I like this. Ooh. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We'll do the drink vouchers for Sammy. No, that was just Jack. 
It can oxidize a bit. I've been mostly just using that little thing of Jack for cooking. So maybe it got too old. Does it taste weird? No, it tasted good. We're good then. But the alcohol stays fine. Well then we're good. Thank you, expert Tom Hung. There you go, the okay. So let's do little squares of this first. And then once this is cut up, then we can start cutting the rest to around the same size. That way, everything can roast together in the oven at the same time. Maple jacks, bit of maple syrup and then add jack, yum. Too much healthy stuff. Matt, there's salmon as well. So I wanna cut the vegetables to a size where It'll cook in around 15 minutes in the oven. 15 to 20 minute roast. Salmon juice and Jack's not good. Not good buff. Nike, that jelly roll though, really good. See, you want it, but you don't need it. That's like the hardest thing about dieting is like, I want all of these things, but I don't really need it. Kind of like adulting, I guess. Okay, kabocha squash. Kabocha, BC Fresh, 476 grams. When it says eat me on this sticker. Okay, that was so good though, Buff. I will do duck fat whiskey shots any day. That was life changing. So the skin on these squash is pretty thick. And then the squash itself for the kabocha is quite firm and starchy. So it is good for roasting, I will say that. It's just a bit hard to peel. But I don't think I'm gonna use all of this today anyways, so I think I'll just cut it in half and then just peel half of it. That way it'll stay better. It's like wood. Boom. There's that little guy. Now we can scoop out the seeds and the pulp. You totally could, yeah, just use it as a Excuse me, little bowl. Put some soup in there. Good to go. Yeah, we've done stuffed squash on the stream before. It was really yummy. So see how it's almost more dry than say a butternut squash. It's like dry and starchy, not as much sugar in this one. Oh, rutabaga. That's funny you say that, Buff, because I'm cooking one up on Sunday. I like how you guys call them Swedes. Ouch. This fingernail is getting to me every time I get water underneath it where I ripped it open. Yeah, the power of Thor. Are you telling me that you don't have a knife big enough, Buff? The knife man 
can't even get through it. Hey, Posh. Okay, I'm gonna trim this stem out. Be very careful when we're cutting this one. Because it is a lot firmer. See how it just kind of cracks? Yeah, it's not the size of the knife. It's how you use it. Exactly, Armored. Boom. Okay, so now, peel it up. Also, I will say that peeling these is pretty annoying too, is the peel comes off in like a lot of small pieces. Yeah, that's not a knife, that's actually a spoon. <laughs> what? You bust out your cleaver, but it was still hard to cut, had to wind up your blow. <laughs> yeah, don't miss when you do that. Simpsons reference, love it. I will always love Simpsons references. Boom, it's okay if we have a little bit of the green left on there. Oh, I saw that sticker. Did I care? No. We're going right through it. <laughs> All right. So now I think the easiest way to match the size of this to those is we will first cut it in half one more time. And then we're going to angle this. And do that. Yeah, we say no to stickers. Not in this house. Oh yeah. Yeah, a wild salmon appeared. That's how you say hi now? Okay, that is a lot of squash, but that's okay because we need lunch for tomorrow as well. Okay, so now we can kind of line these up together. It might be easiest to do it two by two. And then just match these pieces to the size of those cubes as best as you can. As bestest? Yes. Cooking with asbestos. These are the things I learned in construction. 10 minutes, Matt. Nice, dude. Hope you're having a good day at work. Oh yeah, it's pitch black here already. Yeah, asbestos, delicious. So this is going to be put onto a sheet pan, dressed with some olive oil, salt and pepper. We're not gonna go crazy on the aromatics for this stuff because we're still making a dill cream sauce for 
the entire dish. So it'll probably infuse more flavor into that. It's better than black pepper. <clears throat> Thank you. Got a little. LA Confidential. That's what it's called? Yep. Sweet. Kitchen Confidential? Yeah, a sprinkle of confill. Perfect. I've been using that all week. A little garnish. A little confill? Oh, this is really crunchy. Yeah, it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> Posh, what? Thank, Thank you for you the ten dollars for Saint Jude. That means Sammy has to write out Polish's name ten times. Oh man, Polish! Thank you very much oh, for your generosity go. for the kids. We're doing it for the kids. Here's the jar. Yeah, we gotta fill it up. There's already a hundred post-its with Cookie's name on it. And so the giveaway is the two loot bags that we put together from TwitchCon. So link is on the charity command or there's also a Tiltify extension on my channel page. Did it originally house pickled eggs? No, just a lot of pickles. Yeah, Sam is donating. <laughs> His time. <laughs> His time and energy. Okay, let's get this other sheet pan set up. I'm gonna put some parchment down on it and we'll get this squash onto there. And then it's time to beat it up. There's also rumor that Graham or Tabatai and I are gonna do like a little co-stream on a Sunday coming up. Raise money together on that day. Him and Sam are setting something up. It's to be determined. Holy dust. Thank you very much as well. Oh man. <laughs> Thanks guys. Yeah, that's a terrible rumor. Who would even start that? How many more do I have to do? 10. Thanks, well, Paul. I so I was appreciate to go it. Outside, and then you decided to do this. And then... Wait, you want me to partake as well? No, you don't want that. <laughs> the stream won't end. I want dinner today. Yeah, Sam needs to eat. Thanks, right. Paul. All right, Paul, you're in Spoiled. the jar. Right, Dust Spoiled. Spoiled. Next. Oh, it is a good time for sure. <laughs> what? Just not when you're hungry. Yeah, exactly. Half an hour later. Oh! Squash was not cut perfectly. Okay. Let's get a little cutting board out to process the beets on so we don't stain the wooden one. And then some gloves. You need to buy some more CBD oil. 
Whoops. <laughs> I think we started giving some to Doggo, the senior. She's been seeming to be a little bit anxious lately. So maybe it'll help her like stop scratching. She has this like anxious scratch thing going on where no one pays attention to her. She just like starts scratching herself. It's like, what are you doing? You get more than enough attention. Tana has her own little bottle. So cute. Done. Yeah, Buff, ask, ask Sam how he feels after he eats beets and then goes to the bathroom in the morning. <laughs> scares me every time. I literally hear these weird noises from the bathroom. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I forgot we yeah. had beets. <laughs> I'm like, every time. Thanks, Sammy. Welcome. Thanks, Dust. Thanks, Paul. Okay, so these beets are from the garden. They were picked probably a month ago now. Staying nice in the fridge. Yeah, asparagus. You're like, well, that's never smelt like that before. Or when you go into a, like a public bathroom after eating asparagus, you're like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. Remember the first time you gave borscht to the kids, your ex-wife freaked out. <laughs> yeah. What did you do? <laughs> what did you give the kids? Beet juice and jacks? Could be good. I have some pickled beets over on the other side, buff. Beet juice whiskey shots? I mean, I have some of this homemade apple rum. That looks quite tasty. I've also got a couple of other liqueurs on the other side. Guys, Blackberry good. liqueurs. Okay, keeping the gloves on still. Let's cut this big one first. So still matching the size to the squash. So if you need a reference, just bring a little piece over and put it on your board so that when you're cutting it, you're like, okay, that's the size I need. Homemade rhubarb mead, that sounds delicious. I love anything rhubarb. Yeah, gloves are the trick, Nike. To not get your hands all beaty. The trizzy trick. Beaty. How's the raw squash? You sound like posh when she chews. Sammy's crunching. No, he ate a raw squash. That's worse, in my opinion. Raw beets are delicious, it's true. We're just using that as your reference piece, so you know what's happening. Yep, Sam just eats the reference piece, so sorry about that, guys. <laughs> just uh, put this reference piece on your cutting board, yeah. and it might just magically disappear. Yeah. Oh, wow. Butter spray or oil, I love that you say butter. Yeah. Butter that board up. We're cutting beets. You've never eaten raw beets. They're really good, like shaved, yeah. like carrots, like carrots and beets shaved and then dressed together. That sounds weird. Very like human, but you know what I mean. Shave the carrots and beets and then you dress them. Don't ask me what happens afterwards. <laughs> what? What is going on today? Booby trapped. Booby trapped. He would get 20 pound bag of beets and pickle them all. Permanently stained countertop polish. <laughs> he just painted over it. <laughs> Epic. See the little 
Yeah. You prefer carrots unpeeled? You're not weird. I love to not peel carrots. And that's actually why I started getting organic ones. So it's like, if I don't peel this, I won't die. Okay, we want one nice even layer of everything. So a little bit of beets over here. And yes, the beets are going to bleed a little bit into the squash, I think. But everything's going to be mixed together in the end, so don't fret. I know this is even hard for me to do. Okay, sounds good, Matt. Have a wonderful ride home, man. And I hope you have a good stream later tonight as well. Done with that. Oh no. One little square. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Buff, I should have used that butter, like you said. Oh, okay, we didn't wait too long. We're good. We're good. olive oils. And if I've learned anything about roasting root vegetables in the oven is that you need quite a bit of fat to keep them from drying out. So don't skimp on the olive oil. Mind you, we are cooking like four portions today. So it looks like a lot, but it's not that much. Yeah, that's crazy, Buff. It creates the barrier. So all of these should be perfectly coated and then we'll sprinkle it with some salt and pepper over top. Try and keep that separate for now. And then these, I think we'll roast them at 425 Fahrenheit. And I think they'll take about 20 minutes. We'll check them halfway through at the 10 mark and see how they're doing. I don't want them to be completely mush. Still like a little bit of bite in the squash and beets. Especially if we're gonna mix it into noodles. You don't want everything to be mushy. Still need some textural contrast. Sweet potato, sprouts, zucchini last night. May have overdid the sprouts. Yeah, those really don't take long. It's a little bit deceiving, hey? But really, we should just think about them like mini cabbages. And that way we won't overcook them. Okay, that's good. So obviously roasting is, we want surface area here so that we can get some nice color on the vegetables. And to be able to do that is we don't wanna pile it all on top of itself. We need to create space for air, the hot air to move around everything. So that's why we spread it all out. Oh no, Paul. Yeah, oh, there's a little bit of crunch. Not cooked yet. No! It's true, yeah, it's true, Paul. With all of the things, we still always crush the Sunday dinner. Okay, we'll start with pepper. Pepper and squash, such a good combo. Pashi is upstairs. I saw her a little bit earlier. She got a bath today, smelling so good. Clean dog smell. Yeah, 
got some good radish snacks in the fridge for her. I think that's a good amount of salt. I'm just trying to keep it pretty even. You can always add a little bit more after. And then we'll also remember that this is gonna be mixed in with a bunch of things into the noodles. So kind of keep the salt tame for now until the entire dish has been composed. Yeah, it's so funny. She sniffs at the door. Woo -woo. It's like, okay, she needs to come in. All right, how is our list doing? So pine mushrooms, definitely done. Beets and squash roasting. So I think next up, let's get our pot of water on to boil those noodles. Get a nice big pot. And then we can move into our dill cream sauce. Off to Betty Josie, okay. Have a good sleep. Thanks for hanging out. Nice, you'll watch the VOD later. Perfect. And hopefully see you tomorrow. Yeah, that's what she does. That's what Doggo does. Is she waits for upstairs to finish their dinner so she doesn't miss anything. And she knows she can come down here for snacks afterwards. She's like, and now for my second course. <laughs> so we'll fill this pot about halfway up. Nice hot water. Put some salt into there as well. Turn that on to medium heat and let's add one, two, and a half teaspoons of salt. I just need a bit more water. There we go. And while we're over here, we might as well preheat our oven to 425 as well. Cause that is gonna take 14 minutes. She's playing us for sure. I mean, there's some days where she just comes downstairs, goes straight to the kitchen, sniffs the ground, and then leaves. Where it's like, yeah, good to see you too. Great chat. <laughs> Buff, new place, seven hobs and giant oven when you get home. What? Not at the restaurant, like in your house? Yeah, spoiled rotten, so bad. He knows not to put his fork down until he's done eating or else she starts whining to go for a walk. Aw, that's like doggo when we, if we're like eating something in a bowl, like a yogurt little snack or something, when she starts to hear the spoon scraping out the bowl, she is there. She's like, oh, you're almost done. Let me help you with that. <laughs> Okay, dill cream sauce. I think we should do some shallot, some garlic in with our cream, maybe a little bit of thyme from outside. Gotta love the doggos. Don't know what, li what life would be without them. Okay, shallot, garlic, dill, obviously. We need dill in the dill cream sauce. We'll use some Yugoslavian red garlic. Oh yeah, that's right, Buff. You have a ferret. Aww. Wait, who takes care of ferret when you're gone? Or he just like takes care of himself? Do 
this dill in this dish is gonna bring us back to summer. Oh, your girlfriend. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, that. Obviously, we need cream for a cream sauce as well. Perfect amount, I think. I'm not gonna go too heavy with it. And there'll definitely be some wine involved. So white wine cream sauce. Girls have cooties, yuck. <laughs> Looking around for my glass of water, and I see it hiding behind Sammy's stuff, hiding behind the toaster. His cootie shorts, oh, shots, yeah. Just preparing to go, had to give my ferret his cootie shots so that my girlfriend could look after him. <laughs> Okay, that, I'll go quickly snip some thyme from outside. Na, na, na. The ferret doesn't really like your girlfriend? What? Hera is a bit more of a stocky dill, less leaves. I don't know what this is, but it is beautiful, Torino. I also want to grow this. I wish there was like some seeds on there that we could steal from. we'll use this whole shallot. A really nice flavor from that. It is quite large though. Maybe I'll save half for tomorrow. Sammy agrees. The onion hater. Yeah, that's totally the thing polish. That's kind of how like I gauged Sam. Like Posh loved Sam right away and I was like, okay, this is a good sign. But now she likes him more than me, so it's a little upsetting. <laughs> okay, let's cut this shallot really nice and fine. Slick Willy, if you had a ferret, amazing. Yeah, the ferret hierarchy. I love that. He is king of the castle. Okay, there's that. They can tell the relation, I bet you just from like scent alone. Three cloves of this garlic should be good. Smash it up and then I think we'll use the garlic press to mince it into our sauce.
What's on the menu for you guys tonight? Who's cooking? Who's eating? What's happening? You'll purposely go in between you and your girlfriend if you're on the sofa. <laughs> He's like, this is mine, not yours. You made sushi and Thai spring rolls? Amazing, Torino. That is like way more involved than what I'm cooking. Well done. Was it yummy? Garlic fingers on naan with Boswell extra old cheddar and homemade donair sauce. Holy. That is reminding me there's a pizza spot here called Stoked where they do wood fired pizzas and they do like an entire wood fired pizza with just cheese, garlic and parsley and then you dip it in sweet sauce. I was like blown away that something or that a place out here had that. I was like, they have donair sauce? What? Where are you right now? Wait, did I miss that? Sammy, get ready. Whoa, what? What did I miss? Okay, let me revisit this. What the hell, you guys? <laughs> what? He's going to be here for a bit. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what? What? I think someone just crashed the goal. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, no. he's going to be here for a bit. No. Stream doesn't end till we're done writing, I guess. <laughs> I need to see who that was because I missed it too. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, there goes the total. <laughs> you have to click, do your thing. What? You have to do oh, yeah, your totally command. Total. So you get your link. So you can see ah. What? See, this is new to me, guys. Yeah, who did it? Cookie is probably the sneaker. Uh. <laughs> what? What the hell? That's all I can say. There it is. Oh, there it is. What the hell? Cookie. I'm seriously blown away right now. Thank you so much. Are you <laughs> Like I am so happy. So so happy about this cuz I don't want that. I want like we need to do this for the kids. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I don't know if I hate you or love you right now. Oh, do I have this playing? Just wait. Where are you? Cancel it. Okay, well, there goes that goal. Okay. I will be uh, talking to Graham tonight <laughs> and see what our next step is here. <laughs> Sammy will be behind the scenes writing. We don't even have enough post-its. Yeah, we do. We don't. There's a hun there's a hundred per package, and we have eight of them. <laughs> Here's another one. No, that's already got some out of it. We don't, we don't, I don't have enough. Yeah, secret double stream. Cookie, you're crazy. No, he has to. Don't say that. What? Better get your ass to Staples. <laughs> Holy. Wow, that's all I can say. It's funny because the other day when he started <laughs> writing them, I was, I was like, like yeah. I was like, Sam, why don't you just like type it out and paste it on a paper and then just cut the papers off after? He's like, no, I already started writing, so we're doing it this way. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah, just throw in blank ones. We're good. <laughs> no cheating. <laughs> Polish is like, just throw in blank. If you draw a blank one, it's cookie. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put your initials on it. TRMC? Yeah. Okay. Is that legit? That yeah, okay? and you felt bad, buff. Is that okay? Yeah, it's good. Thank you so much, Cookie. Just thank you. You know I'm like blown away when I don't have much to say. You got me good, guys. You got me good. So yeah, let me double check with Graham. Cause it was either if you raise a thousand dollars, I can't see it being 10,000, but we'll see. There is a denomination for St. Jude that if you raise a certain amount is every year they do like a get together thing for charity streamers. And I think it's in Memphis coming up. So that's why Graham wanted me to get into this. So we could like have a bigger cooking streamer presence at this thing, this coming up year. So we're getting there guys. Yeah, all good. Now back to cooking. Okay, so our shallot and garlic processed and ready to go for our sauce. Let's pick our dill off of the stem. That is our oven for our veggies. So once I have this dill picked, then I feel comfortable to get those in. I'm gonna time everything out so that everything's ready at the same time. All we have to do with our roasted beets and squash is we can either toss them in with the noodles, so the pumpkin noodles, or just kind of place them on top of the dish afterwards if we don't want the beets to kind of bleed into everything because it is a cream sauce. So the beets could potentially make the sauce pink. Do I actually say it, Paul? See, I don't even know I say it. I guess that's when you know. That's when you know you're from the true white north, eh? You got to do a vegan menu. Huh? Buff does. Oh. <laughs> Sam was like, what? No. We got called out pretty quick. <laughs> Call him out. We do have Doggo. Doggo's here to celebrate. She needs a radish. She's like, what she got, Salmon? Okay, we can only give Doggo the orange carrots. She refuses to eat purple carrots. This is from the garden. She knows what's what. She's looking at you. She's like, is that for me? That's for me? Yeah. Oh, thanks. I figured you Bailey's? Cookie should do a shot. Cheers, Cookie. This is what Sam says for us. Thank you so much for your generosity. Mm. So good. Now I want coffee. Okay, we're gonna pick our time. We got a little time for that. You ever drink Bailey's from a shoe? Polish, you've drank it out of a boot? I have never drank Bailey's from a shoe. Doggo. 
Oh. Oh, you dropped it. Hey, right here. Posh. Poshy. Come here. Posh. Right here. That's how I know that she's getting old, guys, is that she can't really see sometimes. She'll be like searching everywhere for her treat if she dropped it. And it's like right in front of her face. You mean Shmoopu 2.0? Yeah. Maybe at the end of next year, there'll be a new Puppers. You were giving that to me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, what are you guys referencing right now? I am seeing some weird, weird things. Huh? Something about a mangina. <laughs> Sam's face. Old Greg, what is that from? What's Old Greg from? Is it like a family guy thing? Okay, let's chop up this dill. Cause dill and salmon is delicious. It's dill-icious. Where's Annie? He would have loved that. He did it yesterday. What? Yeah. You weren't on yesterday. <laughs> when we got the order in, did we get it in when we were streaming? I was pulling it apart. I don't know, I seen him do it one time. Okay. The cop. What the heck is Mighty Boosh? I think that's before my time, guys. Mighty Boosh, what? Okay, let's come in with our time. So nice and fine, chopping up these herbs. It's really weird. I'm pretty sure I would laugh at it just because I'm laughing at what you guys are talking about. All right. Okay, our water is boiling. Beets and squash going into the oven. I'm gonna set a 10 minute timer for those. Should take about 20 though. Excuse me for a sec. Indominus! Redeemed drink. Oh no, not again. How's it going, Indominus? Cookie? Was that one stack? No, that was like a third of one stack. That wasn't even one, <laughs> one stack. You're saving for a meal request. Yes. I think Nike said that too. <laughs> Sam just said that too. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I get to have exactly what I want to do. Holy. What is Sammy gonna request? Okay, quick wipe of this so that it doesn't stain green forever. Quick question for request. Yes. What does it, is there any limitations or is it just like one meal? It's like one meal. Like a plate? Yeah, a dish. Okay. 
Thank you for the follow, Dr. Zoidberg. Cheers, Indominus. Staying hydrated. All right, let's go to this stove. It's time to get cooking. Our water is hot. Got our saucepan here. What do we got on here? What did I get in there? This is for our dill cream sauce. So let's get that on to a nice medium heat. We don't want to go too, too dark on our shallots and garlic. Yeah, glass top, so easy to clean, right? And then let's get our bigger pan out for the salmon, which we can also take out now. Let that start heating up, coming up to room temp. <laughs> Cheese is meat. I mean, it's a stretch. <laughs> Wait, was that a pun and I didn't even try? Yes. Yes. I'm on a roll today. Yeah, I don't think I could live without cheese. It's true, guys. It's just so delicious. Ooh, our spinach. That's what we needed. So, pulling our spinach out too. Just a little handful in there. For some green, healthy things. That is so good, Polsh. Yeah, I have noticed that you've been cutting back on meat. Okay, I'm just gonna use some butter for our dill cream sauce. Going heavy. Heavy on the dairy. Salmon and noodles. Yeah, there is not much to see, I will say that, of the house. Not a very big place. So house tour, not the most exciting thing. Yeah, we can do it if you want. We're capable. A beard? Can we do a beard tour? Guys, I don't know if you want to go in there. Oh no. Oh no. Use the thing. Oh yeah. Do this yes. thing. I got him. It's clean. Oh no. Something like pops out of there. <laughs> McGregor, no, no. hi. Nice and clean. You had beef jerky today, Indominus. Nice. Was it delicious? Okay, our butter is almost hot for our shallot and garlic. We are building the base for our dill cream sauce. Yeah, where's the snacks? It's so bushy. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, don't want to get the butter too hot. So let's get our shallot in there now. We'll add our garlic in a minute or two. We don't want the shallot to get too dark either. Sorry, I had to turn that on. I couldn't even see what I was cooking. Schnucks? Is that a grocery store? Schnucks. Yeah, I, I prefer to keep a Snickers in my beard at all times. I like the name of that store. Schnucks. Just drying off the salmon. Veggies in Rotel, deadly Nike. Yeah, at least you can still have cheese. At least you got that. What are you doing? What is he doing? He has a terrible influence on him. Okay, gonna add the garlic to that pan. We have one minute left on our veggies in the oven. We should about should be about halfway through the cook for those. Oh no! <laughs> you guys aren't ready for this one. I'm gonna keep my back turned. <laughs> Oh no, flinging garlic everywhere. <laughs> what even? Wow. Do you talk differently? I think so. Has it changed your voice? Maybe. What era is that from? Yeah, garlic and shallot. This better not trend now. This is not trending. Two pigtails, it's so weird. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> Yeah, WTH. Yeah, I do want to blow it out and braid it still. Hey, vegemables. Oh, we're almost there. The pirate's beard? Oh, hell yeah. I'm in. Okay, rotating those veggies. And I'm going to do five more minutes. Oh, this garlic is smelling insane. And now we are going to do an awesome thing and deglaze with some white wine. Look at all those bitties on the bottom. We'll go with a fair amount. Let that come back up to a simmer and all of that flavor should lift off the bottom of the saucepan. Oh, Sam didn't change the thing back. It's okay. Oh, man. 
It's okay. Just poured the wine in here. I'm gonna let that reduce a touch and then we'll add our cream. And then at the very end, we'll add our herbs. So I'm gonna move this over to here now. Need some room to start heating up the fish pan. So nice high heat on our fish pan. Now we can come back over here. Gotta do stock check. Okay, night buff. Take care, man. Be safe on that boat. <laughs> it's Post Malone's brother, Sam Malone. <laughs> okay, so here's our salmon, freshly caught. Buy your one and only. These ones are easy to catch. We had like four rods going at one time with all pink salmon on them. So very similar to trout, you can kind of tell by the flesh color. It's a little bit lighter. It's not as fatty either. And a little bit of a stronger salmon flavor on these as well. So I want to continue on with our herb adventure and use a little bit of thyme infused salt. Lovely, trying to use this up. So we have some thyme in the sauce and we'll keep that going. So these salt crystals are a bit more coarse. So I'm just gonna be a little bit more careful as I season the fish. We don't wanna over season the fish. Yeah, how do you infuse time? <laughs> this salt is infused with time. You go back or forward. What? Paul, sh we went too far, man. I don't even know how to answer that one. I'm trying to come up with something at least for you. Okay, and then a touch of pepper. Yeah, we almost went interstellar. Man, interstellar doesn't happen very much in the winter. It's more of a summertime thing. Okay, so I'm going with grapeseed oil into our fish pan to start. That way we can keep the nice high heat for the salmon. And then once we flip it, then we can add some butter. But if we added butter now, it would be burnt by the time the fish is cooked. So we don't want that. And do a little baste afterwards. <laughs> Nike. How's this looking? Oh yeah, that's reduced really nice. Let's add our cream. Let that come together while we finish everything off. Use that up, that feels good. I believe our veggies are done as well. And like I said, I don't really want them to go mush. So that's how they're looking. I'm gonna take one of those little guys off and give it a taste. That's perfect. OK, 
Okay, fish pan is smoking. So let's get that in there. And then I'm pretty sure these pumpkin noodles are only gonna take a couple of minutes to cook. A couple of minutes. I might even turn this pan down just a touch. It's really, really hot. Or we can just slowly cook the fish. Okay, so I'm going presentation side down to start. Always drop the biggest filet in first as well. Quick wash of the hands. Our cream is coming up to a nice simmer. Okay, let us see. Keep that boiling. Bear with me guys, first time cooking these noodles. I'm just hoping that they won't all stick together. I'm watching our fish as well at the same time. It's looking okay still. I'm gonna flip it over right away pretty quickly here. Okay. Let me just cover that for a sec. Definitely rice flour on them to help them from sticking. My hands are just covered in it. Okay, ready for the flip. Looks like we got some nice color. Beauty. She's a real beaut. What was that one? Yum. You don't even like your salmon cooked? This is gonna be good. Oh, what's a little bit more butter in there? <laughs> okay, nudes. Holy, they go like translucent. This is so cool. That's coming off. I'm going over here. Let's try one. Ah, it's trying to escape. 
Mmm. Good texture. Good taste. I don't know if I'm getting much pumpkin from it, but I really like these. They were very inexpensive as well. This is hard to get out of the pot. Just wanna get them out of here before they overcook. And then once the salmon is out of that pan, then we can toss everything together. The noodles and the sauce. Sweet. Whoa. Okay, one quick little base on our fish. A little bit of that warm butter. Just let it kind of coat that piece. That's got a really nice firm touch to it. If you guys could see that, really happy with that cook. Just wanna get those out of the pan so that they don't overcook. What we want here is a clean plate, first off. <laughs> and just a metal rack to put the fish onto. And I always cook the fish with the skin on because you can always peel it off afterwards. I just find you get a way more moist fish when you do it like that. Okay, so residual butter in here. Delish. A little bit of fish flavor as well. So get those noodles in here first. And then remember, we just wanted to add a handful of spinach to this for some greenery. It'll wilt very quickly, I think. See if there's any weird pieces that you have to pick out. But we should be able to just stir this in to the noodles with the dill sauce. And with the heat, it'll wilt it down. So just kind of cover those for now as best as you can. Done with that. So herbs, chopped dill and thyme. Going into our cream, ooh. It's nicely reduced, it's pretty thick. But holy, that smells very good. Adding our herbs at the end, make sure that they stay nice and green. Let's give that a taste. Touch of salt. Really nice flavor so far though.
and then into the noodles. Scrape all those bitties. First time trying these pumpkin noodles. Interested to see what Sammy thinks. They definitely soaked up the sauce. I, here's a little trick guys. That's why I always save my pasta water. If you need to loosen up a pasta sauce, a couple scoops of that. You're laughing. That's the Italian trick that they don't want you to know. Look at how nice that just made that. Maybe even one more. There we go. Now we got some saucy noodles. All right. It is time. It is time. We get to plate. First things first, there's the fishes. They've been resting. Still really nice and warm. First things first, you have to put the jar in the jar. Oh, Sam's coming over with some more things to add. <laughs> Into the jar for cookie. Move the fish, please. He says move the fish. He's gonna be busy. He got 200 done. That's an accomplishment. Mmm, cherry tomato torino. I do have some. I have some of our own in the fridge. Ah, oh, sorry, I thought you were done. No. He wasn't done. But wait, there's more. Yeah, dang, cookie. One more, he says. That's it. Whew. <laughs> yeah, damn, cookie. We all need tongs for that, I think. That's a very large piece of salmon. Oh. That's what you're going with? Okay. Torino. Polish 12 months. 12 months. Thank you very much. One year. Us Canucks, we just take care of each other. Okay, so squash. And then some beady beets. Keeping them separate from the noodles so they don't color everything. Nice little cubes. That's very nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting noodles, hey? They're tasty. This piece of salmon is very large, guys. 
So let's do this together because it's so satisfying. So when you know you cook your salmon really well, you should be able to just peel the skin off. And have it like so shiny like that. Yeah, them crazy Canucks. And I'm just gonna flake off probably like that. But like, look at that guys. Look at the juice in there. get just like a touch fancy because I got a new plant. It's human. That's called red sorrel. And it's edible. It's really awesome for garnishing. It's like a sweet and sour kind of leaf. It almost looks like a beet leaf. I've not used it yet. It's really happy in the window. So that's what it looks like. Does it need anything, Sammy? Nope. How do you guys like the top down view? I think it's pretty fun for plating. You haven't ate in two days? Randy, what's going on? Excuse me for a sec, please. gone for weeks. Okay. Let's try this. Can we go a little bit closer? Go as close as you want. Stay away a little bit. It'll settle. <laughs> it's like a real cameraman. Okay. First things first. Get into the corner of this salmon, just flaking off. Mm. Aw, thanks, Dust. I was wondering if I should put the TwitchCon pin on. It's on my purple one. I forgot about that pin. Now that I'm started on having pins though, now I can't stop. Another doggo? That looks more like sunny though. <laughs> okay, let's get into these noodlers. Some noodles and some squash maybe in there. really soak up the flavor. Wow. I really like the texture as well. They're like halfway between like pasta and like maybe a ramen noodle or something. 
It's or hard like, to describe. It's like a Shanghai noodle. Mm, mm-hmm. Like an udon? Yeah, kind of like an udon pasta texture going on. Not too soggy, not too rubbery. Really good chew. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be really good in like a soup. A chicken soup. Bolognese, Sammy says. He's had practice polish over the years. Of keeping some food out of your beard. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is great, guys. This turned out very nice. Another one of Kate's creations. I was like, these are the things that are in season. These are the things that I have in the freezer. Let's make something delicious. And then every now and then, you need to throw some dill in there. That's for you, Torino. Mmm. It's got some good earthy flavor from the beet. That beet. Just shovel it in there and hope for the best. I mean, that can mean a lot of things, Polish. But I feel you, man. I feel you. The green leaf with the red veins. It's called red sorrel, red leaf sorrel. It kind of looks like a beet leaf. Ten percent of the way, nice. S O R R E L. Or, yeah, two R's. Sorrel. Lunch That's lunch tomorrow. You just gotta get the halibut in there. Okay. Okay. Sorrel. Sorrel. That's what it looks like. That's my new little plant. I got it for $1 from a lady here. I thought that was a good investment. It's like almost sweet and sour. I think it's more sour than a beet leaf. But this stuff is pretty young. Like the big stuff gets huge. Out of control. Yeah, I just have it on my window <laughs> still here. You are blessed. Thank you. Mm. That was a bone. Surprise. Yeah, bless you. <laughs> so good. A little less than half a pound costs you 29 cents. The best. I mean, you're not the only one that does that polish. As long as it's not like a mass amount of money where you're like scamming a company. It's like sometimes when the cashier doesn't put it in right, you're like, just keep walking. Just keep walking. Oh, sorry guys. I was trying to not click that. Yeah, dust. So tomorrow, oh, that scared me for a sec. We are cooking out of the new cookbook. 101 Asian dishes you need to cook before you die. 
Well, I better cook one thing out of there at least. Could die tomorrow. Knock on wood. <laughs> uh, pineapple fried rice. Using that big pineapple tomorrow with some pork belly. And then Sunday, some more pork. We're gonna do like a kind of UK inspired Sunday roast. Got a really nice pork shoulder. He just punched it in as fruit. Yeah, this is unknown, so we'll just call it fruit. Oh yeah, totally Torino. It's like, you, you wanna teach them what those things are, right? Don't just be like, yeah, that's a zucchini, when really it's a cucumber. That's not a cucumber? That's a zucchini. That's a zucchini. Okay, who is cooking? Uh, who should we raid? I was who are we raiding, guys? Any suggestions? You guys know I always like that. <laughs> you remember making a meatloaf that called for zucchini ones and you used a cucumber? Still ate it though. Respect, Polsh. Confuse plantains with bananas. That one's a little bit easier to do. From a strange Caribbean woman at Safeway. You would have had very starchy bananas. Okay. So we have, who did we raid? We raided Chef de Partie on Monday. Habitat is making charity burritos. Minnesota, who's actually been coming in pretty often lately. He's making a biryani, which is actually delicious. Really delicious. Thanks, Dust. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. I mean, no one's really good with compliments, but I, I will take it. Oh, Lee Trino. Okay. Or we go do Harris Heller. Nah, he's doing an unboxing. That's boring. Okay, let's go do Taz. Yeah, hey girl, you're looking mighty fine in that apron. Um, thank you. <laughs> hey girl, did everyone ever tell you this? <laughs> Just keep it going. Hi, Uncle Corey. Okay, Minnesota Taz. That's who we're gonna go raid, share some love. He's brought his peeps into us before. And he's making biryani, which is like one of my favorite things to eat as well. Biryani? Yeah, that apron's looking real good hanging up on my pantry door. <laughs> okay, that's where we end it. We're all getting too silly. Too silly. But that was actually really good, Torino. Okay, guys, I hope you have a wonderful night. We will be back tomorrow doing some cookbook cookery some Asian foods. I don't know where Cookie is, but all I wanna say is thank you so much, Cookie, for crushing my donation goal for St. Jude. We're only three days in. So yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Just thank you so much. Yeah, lots of generosity. And we will update that goal for tomorrow's stream. Let's just keep it going. How much money can we raise cooking for the kids? Okay, let's get this raid going. Night guys, take care. Day or night, I suppose. Okay, thanks for everything. Love you, love you all.